Hello, my soccer universe. Uh, unbelievable, the World Cup uh, 22 finished just a little bit less than a year ago and we already have qualifying for the next World Cup in 26 on the way, namely in South America. They started already in the previous international window where I did not find the time to talk, talk about it. And um, we have already four rounds played there. And also Asia got underway, but um, it's still very, very early stages. So I want to focus in this video on uh, South America and then we may get a look at into Asia and Africa is also starting in November when that rolls around. Now, as I said, qualifying started already in last uh, September um, and now, as I said, uh, qualifying in Conmebol got underway already in September with rather unremarkable re results. It seems like everyone is getting the results that you would, would expect with the potential um, of Peru being a little bit, yeah, not off to a great start, which actually continued. However, coming into this one, uh, there are two f faces in, in, in a way, it's all about the big guys, Brazil and Argentina. Argentina is still very much enjoying their World Cup winner status, everything going fine, spirits are high, uh, you can afford to leave Messi on, on the bench, bring, bring him on, then he scores two goals in Peru and everyone is super happy, Argentina not having conceded the goal, perfect record. And then there is Brazil, where you're not playing all that well, you have to change from Chichi to, to Dinich, who is already a little bit of different role and we already, everyone knows that Angelotti is bound to take over there as well. So that in itself is already a big story. Then, uh, you know, people are not very happy with Neymar and I not only think this is down to the performances on, on the field, he came out very big in the last Brazilian election for a very divisive can candidate. So um, people are not really in love with Neymar and they showed it to him by throwing popcorn, uh, popcorn bags, which I think has also some implications, you know, there is a, a, as, a, as an insult in Brazil. The only manager won one draw with Venezuela, not a good, good shot, and then they go to Uruguay and Neymar gets injured. Uh, it's an ACL injury plus I think a meniscus tear in addition, so he's out for at least eight months and brazil then really didn't show much uh and losing 2-0 to uruguay without even having a shot on goal which is very un-brazilian like and so uh let's put it, put, it, put it that way every day alarm bells are ringing everywhere and everyone is very very not calm about it i would say given the qualifying format allows six teams to qualify directly brazil will easily qualify for the next world cup so that's not the problem you also will get a very good coach in Angelotti, most likely. And yeah, maybe it's, I don't want to say it's time to move on from Neymar, but I think uh, it, in the past when Neymar was not playing, um, did not really hurt our Brazil all that much as well. But it's a fact that I think this Brazilian generation, there is a clear playmaker missing and more importantly, a clear striker. Brazil is in a, in a similar funk, I feel like Italy, when I, when I compare what these teams were in the 90s or even the 2000s, their identity is a little bit missing overall. But those are my thoughts. Let's uh, get into the games. I give you here the uh, results from, from the first, first window. I just want to point out our Argentina winning 1-0 and 3-0 to scale, get it off against Ecuador and Bolivia. Brazil also have having a good start, 5-1 over Bolivia, so that's even better than Argentina, although Argentina played away from home in the altitude in La Paz. And Brazil getting a 1-0 win at Peru, which now thinking from a Peru perspective, you know I like Peru a whole lot. Um, you know, losing home, home to Brazil is nothing really bad. We also had uh, Ecuador beating Uruguay after losing to Arch Argentina, which maybe is a slight, slight upset overall. But, you know, Ecuador has been performing really well. They were at the last World Cup. So let's, let's go into the results of the past window. Uruguay salvaging a draw in Colombia with a very, very late Darwin Nunez penalty equalizer, which I think this was the most goals of any game scored. We will see the average goals in South America rather, rather uh, low. Argentina very early Otamendi goal uh, is enough to get a 1-0 over Paraguay and then we already said Brazil play only 1-1 against Venezuela yes Gabriel gives them the 1-0 lead the Vinicius Junior goal is then disallowed for offside uh, we had an, um, and then 
uh, Venezuela equalized very late, which is definitely a point on the plus side. I also want to point out Chile and Peru, those two countries don't like each other all that much. I know this because I have um, Peruvian, um, you know, family I'm, uh, relations. They don't like Chile and I think uh, Chile is generally not, not, not like in South America. Be it as it may, uh, that must have felt sweet for Chile to beat uh, their uh, rivals Peru 2 nil. And in the past round, I mean, we can go straight down the results. I mean, Venezuela beating Chile, I think 3-0, that's already a big, big, big result. Kind of shows that Chile is kind of, uh, we don't know quite yet, but also uh, in with the results that Peru is having, yeah, it will be tough for those. Uh, it's slightly rising to the top, whereas Venezuela might have a really good run. They might actually qualify for the first time uh, around this time. But the two big results on the bottom, Uruguay 2-0 over Brazil. Um, with Brazil not even have, having a shot on goal, so a pretty big result there. And then Messi scoring two in Lima, 2-0 over Peru. Uh, they are really flying high at this very, very, very moment. However, one has to also look at the opposition. You know, you had Paraguay in there, you have um, Bolivia, you had Paraguay, and you had, had, had Peru, Arg, also Arg with four of the uh, lesser nations. So Argentina have not really been tested, and again, if we look here, here to hear the standings, uh, the big teams will all qualify. I mean, if you have six qualifiers, it's everything else would be a real surprise, to be honest. Um, also, we have only four rounds played. And as I said, Argentina have not really been tested and Brazil had to go to Uruguay already. So uh, in that sense, take it with a pinch of salt. After four rounds, you, uh, we cannot really say much. But if we look at the qualifying chances, I mean, Argentina will qualify as with Uruguay, Brazil. Ecuador and Colombia also looking on that. I think Venezuela will have a good run with Chile, uh, also in potential contention. But we see Paraguay, Chile, Peru, Bolivia. Those are the four teams that will probably vie for the playoff spot. The other six are relatively close to qualifying. And you also see the paltry 2.0 goals per game average. Doesn't look all that good. And let's look at the upcoming matchups. Now Argentina will be tested. This will be a huge one. We have Argentina against Uruguay, of course, uh, very locally. We also have Brazil going to Colombia, which I think could be a really, really interesting one. I think also Venezuela against Ecuador uh, and then an Andean derby between Bolivia and Peru. And of course, we have Brazil against Argentina on the 23rd of November. 22nd of November for uh, South Americans, but you know, since the times here all from San Sergio have, um, this will be the big one to watch out for. And then we will see if Brazil can, how well can Brazil cope without Neymar and everything can be adjusted and it gets better. As I said, it's a marathon, not a sprint disqualifying campaign. It, we will know a whole lot more in the next year. Um, in the way things will develop and i've very often seen in south american qualifying ever since they had this full table that teams start out well and then they fall fall off i think uruguay was at one point really threatened to not qualify for the past world cup in the end they just made it so um hold your horses don't panic now brazil still have seven points out of four games which is uh not so bad overall and i know we're talking about brazil who actually think they would win every World Cup and should be the best team in the world. And I can see that point as well. At the moment, it's probably a little bit rough and a little bit of change. Have to see when Ancelotti comes in. That were my thoughts on South American qualifying so far. Uh, let, let me know what you wanna, uh, if you know anything more here, uh, give me a thumbs up, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel for see more. I'll talk to you soon, bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!